So this is just a summary of some of the things that hopefully you learned in the investigation. And if you had some trouble in the investigation, then this summary will allow you a chance to kind of have it, to see it again and to uh, think about it some more and to write down any questions that you might have and then you can ask your teacher about them. So a quick review um, that when we are labeling or talking about exponents and powers and bases and all of those things, um, the whole thing, base and exponent together, is called the power. The exponent, the little number, is the exponent, and the big number, the one that gets repeated over and over again, is the base. Um, and what you learned in the investigation was that you can have negative bases. So when I write negative 2 in brackets to the 4, that is also 16. Positive 2 to the 4 is 16, so is negative 2 to the 4. So let's look at the bottom here, and let's summarize the difference between each of these things. And it will hinge on what the base is. So for this first one, because it does not have brackets, the base is actually 2. That's what gets repeated over and over. So this one is actually like I'm saying, negative 1 times 2 to the 4. That's really what I'm saying. So it really means negative 1 times, and then the 2 gets repeated 4 times. That has one negative sign and it will equal negative 16. The reason why the negative 2 doesn't get repeated is the negative is not part of the base because it doesn't have a bracket. And so we have to follow Bedmus. Bedmus says to do the exponents first. So when we look at this, we have to do 2 to the 4 first. Then we multiply it by this negative 1 that's in front. What about the next one? Well, the next one is almost the same question, but has brackets. So in this case, the base is actually negative 2. So now, when we follow Bedness, and it says to do the exponents first, we're repeating the negative 2. So this one is actually negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. Now, in this case, there are four negative signs. Whenever there are four negative signs, they cancel out, and we're left with a positive. So this one will be positive 16. What about this one here? Well, again, it's like the first one. The base is actually 2, not negative 2. So when we do it, we have to do the exponent first, we, and then we can multiply it by the negative 1. So only the 2 gets repeated. Again, if we look at this, how many negative signs do we have? Well, we have one negative sign, so our answer will be negative 8. This last one, because it has the brackets, that's telling you that the base is negative 2. And that negative 2 will get repeated over and over. In this case, the negative 2 gets repeated three times. When you have an odd number of negatives, the first two will cancel out in this case, but then you still have one left. So an odd number of negatives will always give you a negative answer. And so that will be negative 8. So these, just have a look at them all. If you need to, stop the video and restart it and listen to that again. It is a complicated concept. The brackets, although a slight difference, play such a huge role in the actual answer. And it has to do with whether the negative gets repeated or not. And the bracket tells you that the negative is part of the base. Without a bracket, the negative is not part of the base. So what about the exponent rules? Can we use them if the bases are negative? Well, yes, you can. As long as the bases are the same, you can use the exponent rules. So in this particular case here, the bases are both negative 5, and we're weak, so we can use the multiplication rule. The only thing to be careful of is to make sure that you keep the base as is. So if the question is bracket negative 5, your work should also be bracket negative 5. When you multiply, remember you add exponents. Now we could evaluate that if we wanted to. So we could figure out, and this one's going to be a huge number, but we could figure out that that answer equals negative 1,953,125.
Uh, let's look at the next one. Again, although the bases are negative, they are the same. So we can use the exponent rules. Keep in mind, however, that we keep the base as is. So if the question has the base like that with brackets, we need to keep the brackets for our work. When we're dividing, we subtract exponents. Now this one, be really careful. When you evaluate, negative 6 times negative 6 will result in a positive answer. This one was a negative answer because the negative repeated 9 times. This one's a positive answer because the negative repeated 2 times. Here, same thing. We're going to keep the base as it is, multiply the exponents, and then we evaluate it. Again, because the negative is repeated, the answer is going to be positive because it's a negative repeated six times, and that will give us a positive answer. Now, this next one doesn't have um, negatives, which is fine. If the bases are the same, we can use the exponent rules. I just wanted you to see that division doesn't just have to be written like that. It can also be written as a bar. So in this case, what we do is we use the multiplication rule on the top, and we add the exponents. Then we use the division rule and we subtract the exponents. Then you can evaluate that. Again, that's going to be a pretty big number, and that's going to be 59,049. Now let's look at this last one here. It says, what would you do here? So in this case, can you use the exponent rules? Well, hopefully you know that the answer is no, because the bases are not the same. So what do we do then if we're asked to evaluate and the bases aren't the same? Well, we basically just evaluate each piece separately and follow bedness. So we look at what would negative 3 cubed be? Well, in this case, remember, that means negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. That's going to result in negative 27. Negative 5 squared, because of the brackets, it's going to be positive. 25 because the negative gets repeated two times. Then we multiply these and we get negative 675 for our answer. Mm -hmm.